Is it working? Um, can you hear me? Simon? Um, yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, Ollie, what, what are you expecting from Istanbul, the six you're here? And also, is there anyone that won't be travelling with the squad today? We couldn't hear you that well. <laughs> it broke up. I was just asking what you're expecting from Istanbul, what kind of side you're expecting, and also, will there be anybody that isn't travelling? Yeah, quite a few not travelling. <laughs> but we travel with a few. Uh, we're, um, uh, yeah, Jesse's not travelling. And, of course, we've had a few injuries before. Uh, so we're travelling with a strong squad. Hi, um, Harry, we've asked this to Ollie a few times, but can you explain why Manchester United have been so good in the Champions League, yet so poor in general terms in the Premier League this season? Um, it's not something I want to be putting our finger on. Uh, we take every game as it comes. We don't look at it as a Champions League game or a Premier League game. We just go into the game and, and try and win the game. That's our motive every match we, we play in. Um, obviously, our Premier League results haven't, haven't been as... We go in with the same focus, the same preparation. Um, and obviously, we're focused on tomorrow, tomorrow night's game, which is a Champions League one. And hopefully, we can put in a performance, which we've shown this year we can do in... In the competition. David McDonald. Uh, hi, Harry. Question for you. Um, it's obviously been a difficult summer for you personally off, off the field. Um, how hard has it been to shut out what happened uh, and focus on football? And, and, and is it inevitable that, that what happened to you, you know, will, it, will affect you mentally and will affect your performance level as, as it would anyone in any walk of life? Um, I didn't quite get the question. It was breaking up, but no, my mind's fully focused on football. It's obviously I had a difficult period in the summer, but no, I'm fully focused. Um, I come into training each day, work hard, work as hard as I can, and I focus on each game as it comes. And um, no, I, I can only say, and on what I heard there, that I'm, I'm still fully focused each day in, in improving and taking this club forward. James from Talksport. Oh, hi there. This is a question for both of you, really. I just want to know how you think Man United fans should be feeling at the moment because there's been so many positive moments over the last year and a half or so. Can anyone hear the dark days as we, well? We can't. We can only hear every every ten words you say. So there's no no chance we can uh, understand. Sorry, James. Can you ask again? Yeah, sure. I just want to know how you think Manchester United fans should be feeling at the moment because there's been some major positives but there's also been some dark days as well over the last few months. Sorry boys, it's just impossible to hear what you're saying. There's no internet in Manchester. No internet. The lines are down. Do you want me to type the question instead and you can read the question? Yeah, that'd be better. Probably. You're typing it. Yeah, I'm typing now. Okay. How Sorry you, about this. How do you think Man United fans should be feeling at the moment? A lot of positive moments, but some dark days too. Was that for? For both, for both of you. Well, we uh, work every single day for uh, our fans to have something to celebrate, of course. And uh, the, um, the process we're going through, uh, the players are working really hard. They're very focused. And, of course, hopefully we can, uh, on... Tomorrow night, we can stamp our authority on this group and start with uh, with three straight wins, which uh, uh, we're working towards now. And for Harry as well, the same question. Okay. 
don't know. Jamie? Hi, Ollie, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you, actually. Oh, nice one. Right, just me and you, then, we'll just do this, yeah? <laughs> just with regard to um, Paul Pogba, you still hear me? <laughs> You're breaking up. We, we can hear half of your uh, sentence. I'll, I'll type it. I'll type it. Uh, sorry about this. No problem. You might not make it like it. <laughs> okay, three Paul Pogba. Is there a chance he may be he may never fulfill his potential while at Man United? can be frustrating <laughs> every player uh, is fr frustrated himself and disappointed after a defeat and uh, we need consistency from uh, every one of our players and we, that's what we want and uh, Paul's been going through a difficult period with, uh, with an injury last season and the COVID now is working up to, to fitness so I think we've seen plenty of uh, uh, positives lately so hopefully that can continue. Okay next question is for Harry from Samuel Lockhurst. Roy Keane said there are no leaders in the squad. Do you think his comments were fair? Um, well I can say I haven't I haven't seen his comments but we, we don't look on what's happening especially after a negative result we don't bring the negativity into into the place. We we stay positive and I can for sure say that there's a lot of leaders in this squad. Um, I'm the captain and I've got a lot of leadership around me as well, um, staff and players. So, you know, for sure, there's a lot of leaders in this squad. Okay, question from James Cooper. How much of an opportunity are the next two games to get the 10 points needed to qualify? That's for Ollie. Well, we've started uh, very well with the first uh, two, uh, two games and two great results. Now we've got a chance to get three against a difficult side. Uh, they've done well both against... Paris and Leipzig, so we know it's going to be a difficult task, but we have a chance. If we play to our best, we uh, we hope to get those uh, four to six points that we, we need. Now it's about three points tomorrow night. Okay, question for Ollie from David Facey. What do you make of Paul Pogba's explanation that he was out of breath when he is injury-free? He must be one of the fittest players. <laughs> uh, any any situation, uh, you're a fit uh, fit lad, and uh, Paul knows that exact incident. Uh, he, he could have de dealt with better, and he's held his hand up. But that's that's how it is in a in a game of football. It's a high tempo, intensity, and as I've said, the fitter you are, the more you can do, and that goes with both, goes for every footballer around the world. Harry, it's been a sorry. Harry, how do you get more consistency across Premier League results um, and form? Um, the, the, the main thing is working hard, coming into training each day, trying to improve. Um, obviously, we, we want to be consistent. I feel at the start of last season, we was a bit inconsistent in our performances uh, and the results shown in that. And then we found some consistency after the lockdown period and we managed to achieve obviously third in the Premier League and reached Champions League football. Um, so we've got to find it within ourselves. We've got to find it within the group. But all I can say is it, it, it's got to come from working hard, training hard and, and, and be willing to listen and improve. So Harry, um, it's been um, a difficult period. How do you switch off from social media criticism you get? Um, don't go on it. Don't read it. Ali, do you think you've made yourselves one of the favourites to win the Champions League, given your first two results? You know, results, uh, they, uh, they can sway the, the whole uh, picture so many times. We've, sometimes there's fine margins in games and we've, we've had some uh, good games where we've not got the result we've deserved. These two, of course, show the quality that we have, and but we're not going to... Uh, get too far ahead of ourselves. We we look forward to the next game, as Harry says here as well, keep working to get our consistency because the 
us at our best level, uh, we can beat anyone. And that's that's how we need to go into every game, thinking. Well, Ollie, there's been a lot of experimentation in team shape and personnel recently. Is there a challenge having so many options? It's always positive to have options and uh, ways of uh, playing. We have, a, of course, a style that we want to play. And sometimes, but the thing is, with it's 11 players uh, who rotate and who um, fill different roles and fill different positions. So sometimes you can look at it as on the paper as 4-4-2, diamond, 4-3-3, doesn't matter. The, the principles are still there that we want is still there. And uh, for us, sometimes when, uh, when we start with three at the back, that's the same as when we're four at the back because we, we build from, from a different position and it's just the way football is. It's not like in straight lines and uh, stand still in that position. Mr. Polly, might we see Dean Henderson play tomorrow? Only played two matches since returning to the club and it's hard to see where the opportunities come with De Gea clearly number one in league matches. I think you've got a chance to see uh, all 23 players that travel tomorrow uh, on the pitch and uh, to play. And that's that's the way it has to be at Man United. There's competition for places. Dean has come in and been great in training, been great in the games he's played. So uh, uh, we uh, you'll see the team when we when we start. David has also uh, played really well lately. So uh, I'm, I've got good options. I have a question from one of our Turkish um, journalists. Well, in Manchester United have lost last two matches against Turkish teams. How would you describe and how do you feel about playing in Turkish stadiums without fans could be an advantage? Uh, I think football now is uh, really affected by uh, the virus, of course, and the uh, environment uh, is, is not as it normally is. Away games against uh, any opposition, but uh, in Turkey as well, you've got fanatic fans, passionate fans, enthusiastic fans. And of course, to have the home fans with you is, a, is an advantage that's proven and you, your your fans have been so uh, they've been supporting your team as our uh, supporters do at home. So I think we all miss miss the fans in the stadiums. Question for Oli and um, from a Norwegian journalist: Your son Noah made his debut in the Norwegian top flight this weekend at twenty. That's ahead head of schedule compared to you. What does the future bring for him? <laughs> I was a late developer. Uh, Noah's a different type of player to me, and. Uh, if he wants to pursue his career, uh, that's that's up to him, and uh, I'll I'll support him whatever he wants to do. Yeah, so, what are your thoughts on Roy Keane's and um, Roy Keane's remarks about there not being enough leaders and people you'd want in the trenches with you in this squad? Well, Roy has always been outspoken, and I'm uh, I'm uh, very glad I've got the players that we have here uh, with us. We're uh, and uh, that's we got different jobs, and uh, uh, Roy's job is to uh, to give his opinion. And uh, I always always listen to Roy. But we uh, we move on here with uh, with a great group of players, strong group of players, and I'm sure we'll see uh, a response. How do you explain the drop off in performance level from the win over Leipzig and then the Arsenal game? How do you get the consistency of performance from the players? Uh, we've uh, we've performed. Uh, there's fine fine margins in games of football, and, and that's everyone who's played and everyone who's who's part of this know that. And there's games that you uh, get the margins with you. There's games that you get them against you. Of course, we want to go into every game thinking we can uh, outplay any uh, opposition. We play against good teams. They definitely uh, teams have made their homework against us, we've made their homework against them, and it was a game decided by um, small small margins, both this one, even even the Leipzig one, I would say. Uh, I know that the end score will be uh, remembered and be highlighted 5-0, but it wasn't a 5-0 game. Are you happy with your form since the start of the season? Um, obviously, uh as the captain, I, I focus more on the team than individually. Um, 
we started the season off defensively not not in the best shape against Crystal Palace. We was too open and then Tottenham we let ourselves go, especially when we went down to 10 men and, and to concede six in any game, especially for this club, isn't good enough. So we've worked hard on that since we've come back from the international break. And now I feel like since the international break, we, defensively, we've been really good. We haven't conceded many chances at all. Um, I think Arsenal had a couple and we've conceded two on goals and, and, a, and a soft penalty, really. So, no, defensively, we feel like we're on the right track, but we need to get the balance right. And and that's our job as well in terms of the attacking shape and, and the balance of defense, defending and attacking. OK, it looks like we've answered all of the questions. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.